Energy Seekers, I'm Nick. Gigabyte sent over their GTX 1650 Super Wind Force to check out. The 1650 Super has a new trick up its sleeve that makes it different to the regular 1650. It now has 4 gigs of GDDR6, whereas the regular 1650 only has GDDR5. So let's keep this video short and sweet and see how the 1650 Super performs in our regular suite of GPU benchmarks. Also, just a quick caveat before we start, we no longer have any RX 580s or RX 590s left, so we couldn't test them against those cards. We also don't have any RX 5500s either. The RX 580, 590 and 5500 would probably be the closest comparisons in terms of performance, but yeah. Unfortunately, no dice. We don't have any of those GPUs. Now, we're using our new GPU test system, which is running the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra with the i7-8700K and 16 gigs of Team Group Dark Z at 3600 megahertz. We actually did a full build video of our new Windows and Linux test bench, and you can check that out in the top right-hand corner right about now. That's in if you want to see a build of a test bench. Otherwise, yeah, just don't and keep watching. Anyway, we included some other cards that we've tested recently to give the 1650 WinForce OC a little bit of context. Now, we don't include 1% highs or lows with these tests because for us, it just introduces way too much extra testing. And I personally feel, and a lot of you guys also feel this way, that getting the average frame rate gives us a good indication of that expected performance. We use these benchmarks for every single GPU bench marking video on the channel so you can check out any of our GPU videos and compare that GPU to this GPU. Now we, we like to use testing that's repeatable and standardized and we don't like gameplay testing because those repeats can't be repeated and yeah they're just way too in inaccurate and ultimately they're really unreliable and I just I want the only variable just to be the GPU and not a section of a map in a certain game that no one plays. So anyway I know some people don't like how we do it but that's how we do it so deal with it. Let's move on. Let's kick off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. For the 1080p test, we saw the 1650 Super get an average score of 71 frames per second. For the 1440p test, we saw the 1650 Super get an average score of 48 frames per second. For the 4K test, we saw the 1650 Super get an average score of 24 frames per second. Sounds a little bit cinematic to me. 24 frames per second in 4K, that's like watching a movie. Come on, Nick. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. Use the 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme P set, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. Did I just say P set? Yep. Okay, well, anyway. For the 1440p test, we saw the 1650 Super get an average score of 60 frames per second. For the 4K optimized test, we saw the 1650 Super get an average score of 28 frames per second. For the 1080p extreme test, we saw the 1650 Super get an average score of 17 frames per second. The last batch of tests is with the Final Fantasy XV benchmarking tool. This is an updated version of the tool with a lot more optimizations to make this a far more accurate benchmarking tool. For the 1080p test, we saw the 1650 Super render a total amount of 5,213 frames. For the 1440p test, we saw the 1650 Super render a total amount of 3,658 frames. For the 4K test, we saw the 1650 Super render a total amount of 1,893 frames. Now I didn't do any extensive thermal testing because to be honest, the amount of time that we spent putting this video together just didn't allow us to do that. I did make a few observations. It hit around 58 degrees C on our open air test bench, which I think is pretty acceptable for a low to mid range GPU. Also wanted to mention that I'm aware that this GPU isn't really designed to run at 1080p or 1440p or 4K on high settings. Uh, that's not really the point of benchmarking though. We want to understand where a GPU strengths are and when we push them to their 
absolute limit and work backwards from those results. It's really a process of elimination. And with that said, I think the 1650 Super is looking like it will be a decently and fairly well-placed GPU for gaming at 1080p with medium to high settings. And yeah, you can kind of hit that sweet spot of 60 frames per second. For titles like Dota 2 and CSGO and stuff like Rocket League, I think it's pretty perfect for 1080p. And for around 160 US dollars, I don't think you can find better value right now. The Gigabyte GTX 1650 Super WinForce OC is going for around 159 USD or around 319 Australian dollars at the time of filming this video. And there is a link in the description if you wanted to grab one of these GPUs for yourself. And yeah, before we wrap this video up, uh, I, I figured that I would split up the videos into like a separate Windows video and a separate Linux version for people who are searching specifically for Linux content. And that's actually what most of you guys requested as well. So yeah, um, these videos aren't meant to be Windows versus Linux comparisons. So I feel like that might actually work better for us. However, yeah, if you want to know how it performs, you can just go over to the Linux version of the video, which I'll chuck up there and you can, yeah, you can see how it performs for yourself. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your Windows boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. <laughs> you peak, we seek and yeah. Linux video is also dropping at the same time as this one, and I'll probably say I'm your Linux boy at the end of that one, just to really confuse people. Oh, can I just say as well, Claire, someone commented the other day saying that they were very surprised that I was so pro Linux with everything that we do, because I, I one thing about us is we like the right tool for the job, and it doesn't matter who makes it, basically. So yeah, we, we don't care. Like, it's the same thing with Intel and AMD. AMD is killing it right now, so it's the right tool for the job. And NVIDIA makes like the best GPUs right now, so it's the right tool for the job. If AMD did better GPUs, then we'd do that. So yeah, you know how it works. <laughs> you use a knife to eat soup. That'll take a long time. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.